here now, always present with you, within you, part of you as you are part of everything that exists, your physicality allowing you to see this from a quite unique perspective, so unique that you can call yourself your own universe. Every particle in the universe is its in your in own universe. And as we start this beautiful, joyful broadcast, moment by moment, going through some of the things that are of importance to you or something that caught your attention, something that you would like to clarify your question about or something you would like to have a little bit clearer answer about, there is a lot of excitement leading up to the place in the broadcast like this. We're excited to dive in right away and see what is on your mind. Go ahead. Hi, Miola. So today my question is about worthiness and how in the same week I can experience such polar opposites in so I know you always talk about that everyone we come across is mirrors and I've come like I've had some conversations which have blown me away by their kindness and generosity and just blown away and other ones that have really left me in a bit of a state of shock and left me feeling really quite crappy and I'm like how can both be going on at the same time because some of the good ones have happened whilst I'm feeling crappy and I'm like what is going I'm not used to having both going on at the same time and I'm curious about that your awareness of it is sometimes one or sometimes another you are never having the moment where you're fully at this place of ease and love and appreciation. And then at the same time, at the place of asking the question. So this dance between question and answer, we always use. We love to use this analogy first due to Costa's passion about dance and his excitement to flow those words. But at the same time, it is for you to understand that this movement between question and answer this is between question and answer that's happening. It's happening at all times. Every particle of the universe has its own balance, balance of movement between focused and unfocused part, between question and answer, between that what you call worthiness and that what you call absence of worthiness. And it's only about your attention moment by moment by moment that gets you to experience those more in a dominant way on one side or another side. You're never having experience where you have all of the answers within you. Those answers, all of them are there, but you do not experience them all at all times. You experience dominantly this or dominantly that. So you explaining your sense of worthiness that happens or then lack of that worthiness within the same week makes total sense. We'll go as far as to tell you that that worthiness feeling you talk about makes sense even moment by moment. You can even call that a question answer dance is worthiness unworthiness dance too because every time you're on a perimeter of yourself you're observing some sort of variety and once you get so steady to understand that on the way back from that variety that feedback that you get comes back and you integrate it within this feeling of ease you can call that variety also unworthiness and you can call that by observing variety you ask the question you always ask the question about worthiness Am I worthy based off of that question to see this or to experience this or to have this? And then once you find that steadier part of the equation of the creation equation, then you sense more and more of that. Then you feel that worthiness. You see, all of those feelings on a feeling scale are generated within you at all times. You have this access to it based off of what is in your attention. So you having a moment of total bliss sometimes ecstasy, love, appreciation, as you said on the heels of Dallas conversations where you felt so much ease. And then some other moment can be the very next one where you will ask the question. So that's why we always talk about not necessarily question or just the answer, but we talk about the path from one to another. Oftentimes there is an excitement about having a question and finally releasing that clear wanting that, that you can then see in discovery more and more of that answer. And that's a natural place of being because 
of the feeling that you get when you feel at ease. But we also suggest, there is always suggestion for you to be excited and to be very easy and sensitive about that place of ease when you do discover something, when you do have satisfying experience, and then move towards the next question. Because on the heels of every answer, there will be another question and another question on the heels of another answer and so on. So once you get excited, not only for the answer that it's already always within you and you've seen it at times, more and more often as you understand the whole process. And it's not only about the question that's always triggered by variety. It is the path from question to see the answer in discovery. And then the part from answer going towards formulating the new question. Then when you see this from all aspects, from all aspects from, of all sides, then you get excited about everything. And then it makes sense to you that while in general context you feel almost sometimes like a crazy person that you have this excitement and ease and the next time this very exaggerated question of vibration, you can go and ask Armand about this, about costless experiences, especially before and after having sessions like this, where he then clearly says that definitely was not my husband in that particular experience because there is always this variety. And we want to also bring to your attention another thing. That momentum of variety that you're experiencing is always exaggerated once you feel so much ease. Ease, bliss, unfocused time, love, appreciation, this beautiful softness, this beautiful feeling of fullness that you're having feels like it's easy and like does not have much momentum, but actually has all the momentum in the universe. And that momentum of that ease is where we always recommend you want to be easy about coming into asking another question. You want to allow that state of answer to be dominant within you for as long as you're enjoying it and then be aware in your sensitivity with your feeling system or often called emotional system, this feeling system that gets you to understand, to see where you're at. And then you'll get so sensitive, you will know that you're on a path of asking another question. And then you will not be surprised why those other experiences are coming because then you celebrate them more. You celebrate not only the formulation of the question, you don't celebrate only the answer, you celebrate the whole creation process, which we often, as many other teachers, refer to as infinity. And if the question feels like something that's come up before and it's like a repeated question that you think you've already had the answer to and then it comes up again, it's like, what is that about? If you have an answer to the question, that means that you're moving towards the next question. But this answer to the question is never a full on satisfying game because as you answer even that question, it may appear to you that it's the same question, but it's always the next. So either you have not really seen the answer within you in its fullness before you move and formulate another question, or you answered it and now it's on the heels of that answer for that previous question, you continue asking the question. As from your physical focus, you can never cease to ask questions. Okay, thank you so much. Makes sense. Really really excellent conversation to start this joyful broadcast. Go ahead, we are ready for more. Well, hello, Eola, this is Kevin. Uh, this is my first time talking with you guys and I'm thrilled to be making the connection here. And interestingly, uh, or not, I suppose, the lead, uh, in, lead off from Heather, uh, it felt like part of my answer was in there. I'm gonna have to tune into that again as, you know, as it would be. Uh, so my question is that for many years now, my life purpose has been uh, supporting the awakening of the lightworker community, intuitives, empaths, channels, and so forth. And uh, so that they in turn will be supporting then the broader consciousness awakening. And that's been pretty clear for a while. And I've had courses and, you know, coaching and so forth. And I still feel called to do the work, but for weeks, maybe months now, I felt stagnant. Like they're just nothing really lighting up. Even things I, I created a few months back don't light up anymore. And I'm not really feeling inspired to go in another direction at the moment. So I'm just wondering how can I uh, either allow that inspiration back in, you know, allow it to form, I guess, as you were saying earlier, 
it's 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 new form or maybe my purpose has changed or modified itself and I just haven't noticed. Just appreciate any advice you have on that. As we often say that this is a reflection of you and as the words that you will be hearing are the words that you have access to through your own speaking mechanism at all times. And this particular reflection will get you to see that fuller and fuller and fuller experience of that answer you're ready to see right now. But we'll start with the place of the awakening. We will start with the place of helping and we'll start with the place of assisting. Regardless of what kind of words do you use, it is always in the back of that your intention. What kind of intention comes from that? What is the intention that got you about this particular experience? And then we will talk also about the purpose. This purpose that feels sometimes like a satisfying, exciting thing, and then sometimes it feels like that is taking a new direction. We want to bring to your attention that there is really nothing to be asserted in a way of anyone else's path of their own experience of which you call awakening, which we like to refer to as a reflection, not a teacher, as your own looking into more and more of that everything that exists part of you. So when it comes to those terms, you want to find this understanding within you that what you have been doing from that place of ease and inspiration inevitably gathered some more of that feeling of question that brings you back to see more answers. And as you're focused on the whole flow and seeing that excitement about light working you talk about, about people who are through their example allowing others to see their own might in that same place, Cost and Armand also being very passionate about this, that no matter how much excitement this comes from, this format that them sharing, they also have been in a place like this where they have attracted this. So we want to bring to your attention first that this invitation that everyone has and everyone brings in their own path of seeing more and more of that everything that exists part of you was never so far, even when you felt the most excited, the most purposeful in that way, was never inserted from your end. In other words, your example was allowing facilitating space, space where people could have more and more ease about their ease of their own kind that goes more and more and more and more. And as you understand that it's not your actions that got you into that experience, but your own relativity to your own understanding of satisfaction that brought you to even use the word as a purpose. So we will get stuck on that word for a moment for you because there is a variety of things that you can look into the purpose. So if you look at the purpose as a one thing for a lifetime or for even a period of time, then you can get into the place of what you have described, which is the place of something that seemed have been your guiding light is not that guiding light anymore. And we want you to know that you are the guiding light, that you're the guiding light for your own place of satisfaction. And that even when you do and include these others into this and you're sharing it, you're first and foremost doing it for you. You're doing it always for you. And we can go as far as to say you're doing it only for you because you're even perceiving the feedback from the place of self. So as you get these reflections back, about this not so discomforting part of the process and that not so discomforting part of the process, you want to then soften up that place of purpose because that place of purpose can cause you to start measuring more than allowing yourself to see and therefore others to see as well. Because that measuring and feedback is important, but if your attention is more outside of that purpose you talk about. If your attention is more on outside measuring what effect your purpose has on others, then you do not dance in a comfortable way. Then it's what we ex explain often as a spiky experience. You might be bringing some of the place of resistance and then release it. And then if you have some more of continuity in those experiences, that can feel to you like inspiration is not there. So there is nothing for you really to do. There is only for you to see more now within and to allow yourself to see more within. 
And as you continue now restoring the balance of question answer, restoring that balance of ease, when you get more excited, not only about the ease that this initial feeling has had, you will see that new directions will come. New directions of sometimes taking rest, new directions of sometimes bringing new things, new directions of you seeing more and more of that excitement in others as you light up, but that you do not owe anyone anything, that you're not responsible for anyone's feeling of anything because to begin with, to begin with, there is nothing to be awakened from. There is only interaction that brings this lighting up experience. And we know these might be semantics, but we also know that you understand now in this form of an exchange in direct place, as well as you'll have opportunity in recordings after to see more and more of that which you are. Everything that exists energy moving through eternity through your own question answer dance. So when you feel like that energy is not flowing through you, that you're not shouting through the roofs about this and about that, then it's time for you just to integrate that feeling more with, within you. Because as you give this example of ease, an example of question, example of ease, example of question, everyone you interact with gets more into their own balance of all eternity, that it's not only about the ease. We often say the prize is not for you to be in the ease appreciation, love at all times. It's about you always keeping in your hands reins of your focus and your attention of going on focused, unfocused, comfort, discomfort, question, answer, and so on and so forth. So as you move moment by moment through your own inspiration, knowing that your purpose is balanced experience of question, answer, dance, that then you apply from any aspect moment by moment, you will find yourself more on heels of more and more satisfaction about this. And then everything you do is happening for this reason of where your attention is. Cost and Armand had the same thing about this. Having is an experience, beautiful, never could be enough grateful teachings of Abraham Hicks in their experience. And that was the beginning measurement when this flow started just six months ago. That was the measurement so far of who will see this or how quickly. And then we started saying, what's the rush? What's the rush? What's the rush? You see, in this beautifully intertwined interaction of all infinite number of particles that keeps growing in the movement and in the speed, how can you even consider from your physicality to measure what impact you had on this person and that person on that person and on that person and on that person? So even your thoughts without much action can do that work already. Your sense of ease and vibration can do it. And then all these delicious actions moment by moment will come as you are on the heels of having that as the most dominant place within you every time you do have it. Mm, beautiful. So the bottom line is just ease up, <laughs> relax. Let you it flow. having your own ease and understanding that you as you don't have any necessity to hold down the torch of ease because even if you want to do you cannot hold them for others and there is that is not their purpose nor it's your purpose the purpose is this beautiful question answer dance that gets you excited from one side to another for all eternity really okay. really excellent conversation beautiful thank you we appreciate it so much go ahead we are ready Hi. Okay. So I have a question. Um, a, a few, a month ago, maybe I asked a question about my knee where a horse had kicked me and there was swelling inside. And the, what I heard was again, just what's the rush and to be easy about it and not put a timestamp on the wellness of it. And that was amazing. And I was able to let it go and it's gone. It's totally fine. And it doesn't have, it feels great. And just two days ago, I have somehow recreated the same scenario in my foot um, based on an injury that happened like seven years ago. And it's been completely fine for a long, 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 long time. And so I feel 
that I can be easy about this. In fact, I am being easy about it. I know it will go away and I know that I'm fine and I know it's temporary, but I'm curious why I've recreated it, almost the exact same thing in a different spot on my body. You at all times are making choices. You're making choices for how long you stay in discomfort. You're making choices for how long you're in your comfort. And even though sometimes it seems to, you're making over and over this, the decision that's taking momentum, you're actually making that same decision moment by moment by moment by moment by moment. That's how even all of your reality that tends to be, it tends to be this beautiful agreement of all of these moments that are getting steady and steady and steady. We want to bring to your attention that this injury from seven years ago is not recreated, that this knee injury did not shift itself up into your foot right now. This is just, you have a choice to see it in whichever way it is, but it's, we assure you, a new choice. At all times, moment by moment by moment by moment, it's a new choice. And as you found these, about that place of your knee that you just let it be and allowed it to balance itself up, up because as we often talk about cells, your cells are always looking for new balance. They're not looking for the same balance. They're always also looking for the new balance. And then if you allow yourself to not try direct, to direct for your cells what to do, but to allow them to invite exactly what is necessary for them to balance itself out, themselves out in those trillions of cell numbers out because there is this easy stream that every particle of the universe has as you do in your beautiful orchestration of your beautiful body then you will understand that it's always a choice a choice a choice a choice as you go and try to correlate certain things for you not to make that same mistake in the future you're activating that thing from that memory you have and bringing it into now because both past and the future are always experiencing the now. So it's your choice. It's your choice to see it as your seven-year-old injury showing up again out of the blue. You have a choice to see it as your knee injury healed now transferring into your foot. Or you have a choice to see it as a new question that on some topic has been active enough that it's been active so much and you did not catch it early with your sensitivity to then move in a more comfortable question answer dance. But that question was a little bit consistent and now your body is telling you, hey, there are some questions for you to release from and you don't have to go and look on which topic this question is. You can just let it go as you had from that beautiful experience and allow your body to see more and more of that, which is the natural state of balance of everything that exists. So talking about not needing to look for the question that's active so as I tune into my body and release whatever's going on in my foot, is that also releasing whatever the question is without even knowing what the question Your body is? physicality is always giving you indication that there are some vibration of question that's being repeated for more often than necessary. And there is always going to be even the, the whole concept of feeling of resistance is what gives you an opportunity to experience physicality. So resistance is natural to you, but repeating resistance, which is repeating the question, can cause you to, for yourselves, to be more on that vibration of question versus the flow between question and answer. So it is not that we want you to allow your cells to be in a vibration of answer. Your cells want to, want to play, your cells want to dance. They want to experience variety and then figure itself back to balance and experience another variety and experience ease and experience some other, maybe even slight discomfort. But your body is always, if you look into it, giving you an opportunity, not for you an opportunity to go and look into what's going wrong so you can fix it, but it gives you a signal. So easier you get about, and we have not said this in words like this before, easier you get about your own experience of question answer dance more and more subtle become messages within your own body about something and then you get so good at that that you feel this necessary amount of resistance for the functioning of your physicality but not often to the place where it causes you this pain or this pain or this pain it's almost like 
creating a whisper of your body telling you there is something more about question now, time to ease up. There is more something about questions right now active, time to ease up. Because your body is telling you this at all times. The question is how much you listen, how much you listen for your body to tell you all of this, and then how much you get ahead of sensing. So this brilliant tool of your feeling system you have within you is what gives you an opportunity to move with more and more and more ease so then you get ahead of some of these moments as you want to experience more and more subtlety in your body. Your physical experience is designed to be like this. Your physical experience is designed for you knowing more about question, answer, dance, and knowing that it's only your focus that gives you attention or not on something that gives you to be focused on sometimes a little bit less focused, that dance between discomfort, discomfort, question, answer, that allows you to have more and more of those experiences. And as you go and you're more aware of them, you can create such blissful experience that your transition out of focus into full on focus feels like the most beautiful experience. Perfect, amazing. Thank you so very much. Really brilliant conversation. We are ready for more, go ahead. Hi, hello everyone. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, I want to ask something very concrete. I have two questions, I think, very concrete. One is just the deep understanding of what question I'm asking, or how do I know the question that I'm asking, in the experience of uh, when I relate with a neighbor, this is a very practical thing here. I have a neighbor here, I have my story, blah, 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 blah. And every time, and I had a, a disappointment, let's call it. And when I think about my neighbor, I know that, uh, or I think, this is what I would like to make the difference, you know, like, gosh, okay. Well, the truth of the situation is, uh, for example, in my case, I detect I'm looking for trust because really the sensation that I have is, I don't trust this man, in quotes, let's say. So the question that I'm asking inside is to trust or it, because um, let's say that uh, I'm very happy, I focus on something else, whatever, but every time that that topic come in, I feel the discomfort of, which I suppose I'm asking something. So what is that contrast? What it is that I'm asking for that I can focus and then maybe one day I can look at this uh, neighbor and, just see the appreciation for it, you know, which I know is somewhere. You can start by saying the appreciation for the neighbor, for this neighbor to be this lovely stubborn mirror. We like to talk about anything you give attention to, whether it's a person of important relationship or close relationship like your neighbor, or somebody that you don't spend so much time with, or sometimes a physical thing, or sometimes an animal, or sometimes a plant, or sometimes even focus on breath of fresh air. Everything you give your attention to is a mirror reflection of where you stand. So rather than thinking to see how you can trust more of this person, your question that you're really asking is, this person is bringing me to see more of my trust within me every time I interact with this person. And I have a choice to see how much of that is because every variety, every time you interact with someone, First, you will not be even able to exist without interacting with others because there will no be feedback. So this feedback that you're getting is the most important data, not about them. It is always data about you. It's data that you go back to and then see and have a choice. And it always goes in circles, in circles of the feedback. You see and not feeling much trust and then what to do with this information. You have options, infinite options, but we'll name a couple. You can say, I do not trust this person because I do not trust how he behaves. I do not trust this person, but I do not really want to go into those details because I know that I can see something more of me within this interaction. And then eventually, as you start moving little by little, with starting point being that this person is this beautiful, stubborn mirror that allows you to see more and more of fullness of you because without feedback, you don't look so much more in. If there is not feedback, you will stay within that, what you have, and then your, everything that exists part of you would not be eternal, which cannot be. So with this feedback, you see more of you. And then with this other feedback, you see more of you. So you have the choice of seeing 
how much more you can see of you with interacting with others. When you go and give this a moment, when you try it as an exercise, first, it's always easier with people that are not as important or not as frequent. This is why we often say the experiences with people you spend a lot of time giving attention to. Your work people, your neighbors, your family are usually those most stubborn mirrors. And those are the ones you want to celebrate. Sometimes you want to withdraw your attention and integrate within you as you do with anything you give attention to. But those mirrors, those important relationships where you can experience more variety, those people that you care about or those people that you inevitably see more, you cannot escape, which means that feedback is inevitable, which, which means that you seeing more of everything that exists part of you is inevitable too. And that is how you explore to see more of that worthiness we started talking about that the trust is not about the other person, that the trust is that you are as much as physical divine and that you are moving through eternity as physical as well as a God. Wow, okay. So when I'm, I'm applying, I'm trying to apply all of this because in some way, I, I somewhere inside myself, in my core here, I do know that I am trust and I feel it. Yes, and, the, the, the and question, this is question, exactly what we want to bring to your attention right now. At the moments when you receive something, as you say, as more ease, even in this interaction, something is a more ease, suggestion is always to take a moment, to absorb it, to celebrate it, to bask in it, and then allow yourself for this question, for this stubborn mirror that your neighbor is, come and show up to you, instead of you going and trying to check in your sense of trust and worthiness with this person. The suggestion is for you to find the ease that there is no rush to go to ask another question when you're in a place of ease, when you're in a place of appreciation, when you're in a place of bliss. And therefore, there is no rush for you to see the answer when you're in a place of question, when you're crystallizing your desires and your wants. So that all together is a beautiful, easy dance where you can allow to see more and more and more of that, everything that exists part of you that you are. Mm. Satisfying? Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to let that sink. Thank you. Excellent conversation. Go ahead. We are ready. I'm very excited to ask a question about a shift that I have experienced in my own energy. It feels really, really, really good. Okay, great. And I'm just wondering if I just want like some feedback from you and I want to just chew on it. So there's a human phrase, I suppose you could say that says like there's fear in the unknown. Like people are fearful of the unknown, right? And I think for a lot of my life, I shift. I may have lived, I have experienced it really because I accidentally took it on from people around me. But lately, what I've noticed for me is that there is excitement in the unknown and a shift that's happened because now I'm excited to think that the universe has this all under control. There is like the universe is going to show me every step that's before me as I go, and I don't have to create or 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 yes. manipulate or try to control anything about how the things that I want. Yes. So I okay. okay yeah. So this talk that you talk about this unknown and known, this idea coming through you is always known to you. Discovery of it, how it shows to you in your physicality is what's unknown. And that is the excitement part. The excitement yes. part is in, dis in discovery. So there is really no excitement in the known. There cannot be excitement in something that is known. So once you have this idea received about something that you desire and that you want, then you allow yourself to be easy about the discovery and then the discovery that moves you moment by moment in asking new questions to see new answers and then eventually to see that maybe more important answer about a certain topic that fear can never be in unknown. Fear as it is does not really exist in that way because it is the choice. It is the choice when you give your attention to. And we also want to bring to your attention is that there is no one doing anything for you, that you are someone doing everything for you. Your experience of understanding the place of question and experience of understanding the place of answer 
there is no one else organizing any of this stuff. There is only you seeing yourself from the place of everything that exists, sometimes with more ease in an unfocused way, or seeing yourself from the place of your focused intention, which sometimes generates more question. But it is all yeah. you at all times, and everything you see in your experience is this beautifully orchestrated receiving of an idea showing into your reality with every particle of the universe being part of it which you call universe <laughs> yes and like every little particle it just feels so good to me to feel that because i feel every little particle is just propelling me forward and it's like there's like this message and this voice that says um you're just it, like just let us play with you let us dance with you just let go of control you. and just allow just you. allow that is you and we're gonna say it a few times because that is all you you seeing <laughs> everything that exists because you are everything that exists you have access to everything that exists which makes you being everything that exists you have access to all the divinity which means you are divine you have access to god because you are god as well as physically focused being Excellent conversation. Satisfying? Yeah. yeah, basically you're saying that I should continue to dance with the universe because I actually am the universe. We want you to know that you're doing it all at all times anyway and just enjoy your discovery of seeing more and more of that and then watch magic happen. Yes, thank you. I am so satisfied and complete. Thank you, Iola. Thank you. Great conversation. Go ahead. We are ready for more. Wonderful. Hello. So my question is about expectation. And in talking to a friend this week, um, it made me kind of want to understand how we could use expectation for our advantage, but balancing that with being completely open with no expectation. So for example, we know that let's imagine you have positive expectation for something and you're lining up with it. The energy is going in one way and then that lack of resistance you can manifest it. There's the other side of something that you might say, I don't wanna have any expectation on this because in the case with my friend, they were always afraid of being let down. So then they say, I'm not gonna have any expectation. So they might go into a situation very open and perhaps in that same open, non-resistant space could bring to them manifestations that are wonderful. So what is the game of having giving yourself the permission to want to expect something and line up with it in a way, prepave or segment intend that. And at the same time, not wanting to confine yourself or limit yourself to what you think you might be wanting from a situation, but instead go in very open and allowing with just the most general expectation of, I wanna feel good versus maybe I have an expectation that this situation could unfold in these ways with these conversations, with this deliciousness and so on. So what is that dance or the balance with expectation versus allowing or wanting to get specific with something and not? <laughs> this dance of question answer, this dance of comfort discomfort, dance of focused and focused is also dance between what you described as expectation or no expectation. We like to often say that there is several steps. We do not even call them steps because they happen with such simultaneous way on various topics within you that sometimes it's hard to track it down, but we'll give it an attempt for you to understand that observation of your variety is always allowing you to make choices. And as we spoke earlier, it's all your choices. You observe something, make a choice. Observe something, make a choice. Sometimes more choice of discomfort, sometimes towards more comfort. And usually, once you repeat enough time your observation about discomfort, you clearly start seeing what you want. So we like to say, you observe, choose, observe, choose, observe, choose. And then after enough of that process, you catch the wave of wanting. And that expectation of that wanting, that is the time when you have the expectation. That is from the place of you observing and choosing, observing and choosing. You are never choosing anything general. You're always choosing a specific thing, but you want to go to that place of general in order for you to receive that specific thing. So you go through observation and cho choosing, observe and choose, catch the wave of one thing about something very specific. And once you're so clear in your expectation 
not in your expectation of seeing it in your reality, but of expectation of what you want, of expectation exactly what you want. Then you don't go back so much into observing shoes on that topic. And then it's time for you to release it. It's time for you to release the expectation of it showing into physicality. You want to release the wanting. You want to release anything because this vibration of expectation and this vibration of wanting is part of the creation process, but it's not what gets you to experience in your physicality. It is the releasing of the wanting, releasing of that expectation that, that allows you to be on a discovery. So you release that wanting, that wave you caught, you release it, and now you're riding the wave. And that is the moment that you describe as general. That is the moment you describe of no expectations. Expectations or wanting, you want to switch into no expectation and discovery. Because in discovery of it, in allowing yourself to take this side this way, and then this way, and then this way, and then this way. And then you move through all of those beautiful, easy tides from one side to another, to another, to another, and allow yourself to see unveiling of this curtain about this question, this curtain that shows you answer on this question, this gift box that allows you to see this answer, and so on until then you see some of those things that you clarify through your expectation, through your wanting, through your expectation, and then release that in a place of not really caring much how it's going to come and show up, and then discover how it's coming and show up. Because this is excellent conversation leading back to conversation we just had, is that you are not excited about knowing, you're excited about not knowing. You're excited about knowing what you want based off of your expectation, but there is really no excitement coming into the place of trying to force on how it's going to come. That unknown, that discovery, that unknown discovery we're adding to this vocabulary now. Unknown discovery of how it comes, it's what's thrilling, and that's the part that creates excitement again until you see it and then you're ready to ask the next question and the next question and the next which means on the heels of general, when you receive in your discovery what you previously clarified specifically through your observation choosing, you become specific. But then you don't want to stay specific for too long because once you're clarified the one thing, you do not need specific. You need general. And oftentimes, more generally, you get to that place. Oftentimes, when you switch your topic, obviously, sometimes it can be obvious to you the best way is to switch topic altogether into something else and then on the heels of one experience, you get something else. And on another experience, you get something else. And all of those movements that you're having in this beautiful dance of your own discovery is what gets you to experience any of your received ideas clarified through your expectation because you release that expectation into a discovery. So in a way, expectation is helping you understand more of what you are wanting from the experience. And in that way, it's more specific. But then once you've pinpointed what you want, that becomes the release point in a more general way of saying, now moment by moment, let's flow through maybe this next segment that I had one expectation with, but here I am now being more in this At that moment, your clarity about the expectation and wanting is when the moment is create, created, when that physical experience of that answer is even in your physicality created. Let's say you want to have certain amount of money in your bank, and through your observation, you're doing calculation, you're observing your life expenses and how much money you like to spend on this and on this activity and on this type of purchases, and then you come up with a certain number. And then when you come up with a certain number, that particular number is clarity. That is that expectation. I want this amount of money. But then if you keep pounding that expectation and that wanting about that, then you can spend a couple of years, as Costa and Armand have, in starting their own family. There was this expectation of this number to be in a bank, and then just recently, months ago, they realized they, they do not have to have all of the money in the bank, that the process is actually divided into several different opportunity several different steps and they said are we ready for the first step and they were ready and they went with the first step and as they accomplished the first step on the excitement of that very beautiful first step then they started seeing how things are sorting themselves out in other words they became general after years of being very specific about specific number and then because they had this specific number in mind that clear wanting they did not shift their attention 
from that clear wanting. They kept pounding the wanting, which that kept building their resistance, and then not even the first step showed up. And then once they eased up this whole time with what's happening in the world or allow them to be more easy, to be in a new place of more ease, to take that certain things are more easy just when you relax and allow themselves to see it. And all of a sudden, this beautiful inspired moment of them seeing the step. And the first step being just some several thousand dollars. And the second step being these tens of thousands of dollars when they literally turned around weeks after and realized that all of that is already there anyway. And they were waiting for two years because of focused on everything and then did not listen to what is next and what is next and what is next. And as you get this clear expectation and wanting set, then your discovery of what is next is taking you to take step by step through so much joy and anticipation of that showing to you that that is then real expectation you talk about. Awesome. Thank you so much. Really, really brilliant conversation. We're excited for more. Go ahead. Is it my turn or was there another Liza? <laughs> it is your turn. Go ahead. Amazing. Oh my gosh. So I'm loving this idea that everything is a mirror. I overheard you say that something on Facebook and it just made so much sense to me. And in the same line of questioning about the girl who had the question about the neighbors, very similar question. I realized everything's just a mirror. What's the core I'm feeling about this? There's fear or judgment. Okay, beautiful. So that's something I can soothe within myself. And I love the beautiful spirit of Lindsay and bringing that we can find joy in the unknown. So I guess I kind of want to build on this question of falling in love with the discovery because as an actress, I've loved that. I'm like re imagining my career from the perspective of if it's just about me figuring it out then everything is so delicious as opposed to like proving or uh getting alignment with other people so i just I, the heart of this question is since i know that everything is my mirror when i'm actually communicating with people and relationships it's almost like there's a distance because i realize they're my reflection so there's this kind of, how do I navigate with this? This casting director who's now calling me and focused on me and I'm t feeling a way about it or this friendship or this neighbor. It's like, I understand everything's a mirror and it's so soothing in one respect. And then another respect I almost makes, makes it makes me feel like I'm floating <laughs> and I don't yeah. know how to integrate we'll it. We'll offer some words here. Thank you. And to begin with is that there is nothing even for you to figure out. And also, as you understand that these mirror reflections are you, these mirror reflections are you, and this mirror reflection is you, and this mirror reflection is you, and you, and you, and you, and you, then you have an option to see at that moment, do you want to cover that mirror? Do you want to open up that mirror? Do you want to allow to see that one feedback or you want to continue having feedbacks? Do you want to have this experience where you over and over see the feedback or you want to withdraw attention to a different mirror, different mirror. There's always a different mirror because everything in your physicality is a mirror. And then allowing yourself to be in a place of not constantly looking for mirrors to come in front of you and not constantly seeing those mirrors reflect back to you by taking your time as well to have this ease about integrating that feedback and seeing, as you said, where is that taking you? There is something that you get as a feedback and we want to bring to your attention that this feeling of ease, feeling of appreciation, feeling of love, feeling of sometimes even enthusiasm, of this bliss, all of these experiences are always within you. You always have access to that because you are all of that. To the core of what you call your being, this is what you are. You are this ease, you're this bliss, you're this love, and then those mirrors that you give your attention to from when you're satisfied with that, then it's time for you to steer it up. You steer it up by looking at this mirror and this mirror and this mirror, and then consistently with this mirror, and those are your important relationships, and then some of these mirrors, not so much. But you are always in the choice. You're always in the choice of how long you look at the mirror, how you move away mirror from one side to another. You're always making the choice. Do you want to look through this friend, complain to you right now, because you invited some sort of complaining. Nobody put any complaining on you. And at that moment, you can have an option to see 
if you're sensitive enough to see that there is something triggered within you. You don't have to go and analyze why, but just recognizing that it is puts you in a driver's seat again where you know it's your choice. I made the choice of vibration of complaining. And now I made the choice to have this friend give me feedback of complaining. And now I have the choice to either cover that mirror and go within, or if I feel stable enough to turn it around to see what is the next feedback and the next feedback and the next feedback. Costa loved this game when he realized that quite recently, about a year ago, before any of this was flowing in these words and, and, and ways, more and more now as he listens to pieces to these recordings, he sees some of these intuitive actions he was making. He came to the point to realize that if everybody and everything reflects back on me where I currently at that moment, he was using verbiage vibrate or oscillate or move where I'm active, which means there is invitation for this and this. If that is all me, that means I can shift it out. I can shift it around. I do not want to do this for anyone else. I, don't want, to, I want to do this for me. And he had this conversation in a place of his home country with a very close friend and he played this game. He did not offer any words. He just allowed to sit there. And his expectation was that so far, this friend always starts with the place of complaining and then Costa stays until it's time to cover that mirror and then he goes. But he decided this time around not to cover the mirror because he understood he was so steady at that moment that he could just be steady and take any reflection back. He was ready to play. This is really when you play. This is when you play about doing this beautiful dance with interaction from this mirror and this mirror. And then moment by moment as conversation was going, he would have conversations with himself. He would say, I see you. I see what you're talking about. I know I have some of that too, but I want you to know my friend, we're both really have access to everything. No words were spoken. Friend was talking in a complaining mode, but Costa was steady on that other place and did not allow that to reflect back. And of course, it was choice on that vibrational place from his friend, either to join and sense where this goes or to cover Costa as a mirror as well. But this conversation turned into something so positive, so exciting that Costa would literally hear words he was receiving coming through the mouth of his friend. And then he realized that all of it is anyway always about him and his own steadiness in his own oscillation of his own question answer dance and where he's dominantly at. And does this happen all the time? No, sometimes he will cover the mirrors. Armand will probably tell you how often they cover each other as mirrors as well because they're to each other these most stubborn mirrors. So you have an option at all times to choose how you dance between all of that. But we want to bring to your attention that it's always your choice and there is nothing for you to figure out just to blissfully and joyfully dance through all eternity. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I just get it in every moment that I'm inspired. Do I want to continue choosing this? It's come from a place of ease. This feels really good, beautiful, nothing serious going on here. I so appreciate this clarity and I'm excited to continue going on and choosing my day joyfully or however it's inspired. <laughs> Thank you so much. Really, really satisfying conversation. Go ahead. We are ready. Hello, friends. So I have a two-part question that coincides with each other. The first part is on um, a new way to look at the nature of reality and creation, and I want to see if I'm on the right track there. And then the other one um, is a little bit personal that relates to that. Um, so yeah, so the first part is I had a thought the other day. Um, and kind of the picture of tuning forks came into my brain where we're using our thoughts to create these vibrations and these feelings and and using that to attract to us that which we want well i was like is that feeling a little bit too specific at least for my brain so then the thought of sound came in and then i started thinking what if every vibration is um, actually sound. What if it's all just a frequency? And that was the word frequency that popped into my head. And we're just using our thoughts to attune to a certain frequency. And I don't know why I wanted to say molecular frequency. I don't have a science background, but a frequency we're tuning into. And it, it doesn't matter what we're using to tune into that frequency. If we're vibrating on that 
that high resonating note, then any experience we attract to us is going to be on that high resonating note. So really, if you just do whatever you can to feel that internal frequency um, that resonates with your soul, then that is what you're going to experience back. So really, you don't have to specifically, going back to what you were saying in generalities, you don't have to specifically create, you just have to specifically tune to a frequency of sound creation. Is that accurate? Everything you said is accurate, as it's coming from your perspective. We want to bring to your attention these tuning forks and the sounds that also, it is not for you to stick to this one vibration that you tune in with your tuning fork and stay there forevermore. We want to bring to your attention that the movement of oscillation of every particle in the universe is so quick and so busy in this thrilling dance of question answer that it covers all frequencies at all times. It is just your attention is your tuning fork. Your attention is the place that gets you to experience where do you give your attention on that scale of infinity, of infinity from your physicality being the bliss on one side or maybe fear on a completely opposite side and everything in between? You're constantly moving through all of that. You're not there just in a place of one and dropping and going up and dropping. It's all happening at the same time. It is just where your attention from your physicality gets you to land the most that gives you dominant experience of this positive feelings or dominant experience of sometimes negative feelings on this scale. But the sound that oscillation is making is in the nature of everything that exists in sound being one of your physical senses. But since everything moves at all times, it moves through those what you describe as different frequencies without getting too much into those details, even though we really, really loved your expression on molecular level because it goes from every particle in the universe and then based off a of variety of mutual invitations because any interaction is mutual invitation based on mutual invitations congregating even in these beautiful perfect in their tool based organized system bodies that you have the congregate of millions billions trillions of these particle cells Mole molecules as you described so as we say that that means that everything since everything is based on that invitation then it's only your attention that is to be directed to see which part of that amazing infinite scale that keeps growing with every question that every focusing mechanism can formulate in different ways brings to eternity okay great can i ask the second part of that question which is or random. So oftentimes when I'm in meditation, like this uncontrollable urge to just like sound a random note comes out of me. Is that me tuning my vibrational field or is that just releasing resistance or what is that noise? It can be anything depending on how at that moment, where are you in the process of your quieting your mind? If you're in a place of bliss and then you release the tone and then you experience more bliss, then it was releasing of resistance. Sometimes the tone can drive your direction towards the place where you want to release, this, the, release the, the resistance. We would not make such a big deal about trying to spe specify it, but anything that we receive in a place of satisfaction, it's moving you toward less and less resistance. And sometimes it brings your attention, like we had with a friend who, whose body brought attention to the foot about some question that's being asked. So sometimes it's about formulating and crystallizing the question and sometimes it's about release releasing that question into seeing discovery of an answer either part equally important in your physical and eternal expansion okay thank you i will release the floor brilliant conversations tonight go ahead we're ready for a few more questions i um i believe i'm next Yes, you are. Go ahead. Uh, so my desire is to bring more channeled messages into the world. And I have an idea or a thought that's been stuck for a while that I need to be doing some journaling. And I have not been able to create that as a habit in my life. Lack of discipline or maybe it's, I don't know. That's what I'd like some clarity with. So talk to us about your desire about this more received messages coming through what is the excitement about that the 
Um, I have noticed in times past that I've been able to do automatic writing and the messages that come through are beautiful. I also know that I'm able to connect with people in a different way and pinpoint an issue that they're having. And, and hey, well, we'll take one moment. My excitement is that I can do this. So I know that the skill is there. Where I'm getting stuck is I have an idea that I need to be journaling. And I haven't been able to make that part of life. Who do you think has initiated this thought of who brought this thought to you that this is something that you have to do and that this is the way for you to do it? That's tricky because it's That's why we ask the question. Yeah. Yes, yeah. other people talk about journaling and the idea says, Misty, pay attention. Misty, pay attention. Um, and then the stuck point is, I don't want to get up in the morning and journal. As we are hearing what you're saying, we hear exactly opposite for you. There is this notion of that you need to focus and focus and focus and focus. And what you are desiring is to have this place of so much ease that these thoughts are coming through and then you will either record your voice or you will write it down or you will do it live or you will have these thoughts coming to you in a place like they're coming through Costa and a lot of different people who desire to have it in this format. You see, you do not have to be specific about something and then go for it because someone might have even said that you have talent for it or that someone says this is the way for you to go because it worked for a certain amount of people. You're so unique in your experience. Even moment by moment, you are not you that you were previous moment and previous moment and previous moment. With every moment, you're brand new you. And then you can imagine the uniqueness from perspective that you have, that even from you, it's changing moment by moment by moment, that those contexts of others really bear not much weight with you unless you choose to give it attention and unless it serves you. Because at all times, your attention is your place of choosing. Your attention, you're choosing. You give your attention, you're choosing. More attention, choosing. But what we want to bring to you more than anything of this is that in the place of releasing the focus, in a place of releasing attention, in a place of journaling because you want to write something down. You see, journaling can have many various forms. It can get you to release the resistance to ease up. But if you're already in a place of ease up, why would you have to journal? You do not have to read. You do not have to write. There is many that Costa has not written read more than there is a lot of energy coming through have not read more than few books over the last five to six years and one of them was about teachings of abraham hicks because that was the next thing for him and then he read all of those books and since then he did not read a single book he read another one and then when he feels like he's inspired it may be in another five to ten years but he's been told all of his life that you have to read in order to be literate you have to read in order for you to be educated, for you to have different perspectives, not only to watch TV or to go to theater or to dance or to do other stuff, but that is just the context that you choose to do. You can choose journaling to be your way out of resistance into the place of ease, or you can choose for journaling to be the place of you receiving it or not to be part of your experience and your process at all, because you're so unique in your experience that not even if everybody that surrounds you, we're going to go as far as to say, even if everybody on the planet had the way to do it certain way and work for them, you might be the first one that something else works for you. That's how unique your perspective of physicality is. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I heard you say ease and release and basically just relax and it's going to come. You will have these experiences on the heels of time where you're more unfocused because what you call channel message you call what Costa is doing right now, which is the place of ease. He gets in a place of ease. It was a practice to get that through a couple of simple breaths, he can see the fullness of everything that exists that he is and allow you to have that as a steady mirror to not allow you to move around too much because that was his desire to do it in this particular format. Artists do it when they have inspiration to do it. Musicians do it when they are writing. 
musicians do it when they're performing. Dancers are doing it as they're listening to the music that musicians did because also dancers created that music even though they did not write it. By listening, that means they created it. So there is so many options for you here and for you to discover your own unique way of experiencing ease that will allow you to hear this, everything that exists dominantly within you, then then you can share that steadiness with others because that's all that's happening in this kind of format that you're looking for. Really, really brilliant conversation. Thank you. Go ahead. Oh, it's me again, Viola. And um, I just, <laughs> I'm just like basking in the joy and this message that you're giving us. And it's so appreciated. And I want to ask something that I, like I almost feel there's a wobble about it and I don't want to feel that, but I'm just going to ask because I'm, you're going to obviously give me clarity on this, but I'm like, I understand so much that everything that we are here to be in these physical bodies and this physical presence, we are here to just um, dance, dance with the question and the answer and find our knowing and find our clarity and it's this and that and black and white and up and down and and it's just this beautiful dance where i've learned to find this balance and then like there's something still within me that wants to ask like well what's really the point of all of this like did we just all come here for this like joyous dance of you know question and then answer and then like problem and solution like I don't even want to ask because I feel it's kind of wobbly, but at the same time, I just want to know, like, what is your, what is your input on, like, what are we here for? Like, why are we just in this, like, when we're young and we're little and we're raised in certain environments, we feel and we adapt to the people that are around us. And so a lot of times we are taught to forget who we really are and, like, the power that's really within us. So why do we go through that experience of forgetting and then having to like re-remember? Well, you know, like in there obviously me. such joy in the re -remember. Yes. I want yes. to bring to your attention the experience of choice of every particle, focused or unfocused in physicality, always at choice, at choice, at choice, at choice. Okay. And then based off of your focus moment by moment and those choices that you're making, sometimes you have more resistance and sometimes you have less resistance and sometimes you have more excitement and sometimes less and sometimes more ease and sometimes less. But it's always choice and choice and choice and choice. So this physical and every other physical iteration movement from one to another question is what is the most exciting part about it? getting the clarity about what is wanted, getting the clarity about the question you're asking, and therefore answer that will satisfy that question, and then discovering that particular question on a path that is not known, the path that it's not known to you, because the light is in that discovery moment by moment by moment. There is really no purpose of any kind but to keep the purpose of discovery and satisfaction, discovery and satisfaction, discovery and satisfaction, and then understanding that equal parts of question and answers that are happening through your physical apparatus and through your physical focus are what perpetually bring eternity to stay and expand in its beautiful eternal way. I get that. Like it's just a constant evolution, a progression of just like everything that we are learning and, and knowing and we just, we get like, I have to think that I'm just on this whole path. Of like, it's like a little like treasure hunt and every little time I come around, yeah. You get to experience eternity in real time. Oh, <laughs> okay. We okay. thought it would be satisfying yeah. for you to hear. And an excellent call oh. for Armand. You, from your physical focused perspective, get to experience <laughs> eternity in real time. 
really yes. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> we'll take another question if there is some. Yes, hi. So based on so much of the conversation that we've been having today, it, it's always coming back to your life experience is a reflection of your inner world, right? Of your vibration. So my question is just how we'll much- a little adjustment there for you that reflection of others coming to you, it's not reflection of your inner world. Your inner world that you describe is everything that exists, which means access to everything that exists. You're interacting with others is what you gave your physical focused attention to that brings your flashlight back to parts of that eternity to show you new parts that keep rising and bringing more and more of that everything to, that exists because even if you could see everything that exists within you at that moment, the next time you ask the question, there is a whole new configuration based off of all of the questions and all of the particles that asked questions just a moment ago. So you can easily say that moment by moment, there is a new converse configuration of everything that exists and it gets quicker and fuller and more and more satisfying. Okay, so in that case though, what, what I'm observing then would be the reflection of my vibration, right? Of what I'm offering in that moment, we would say? Of what you chose, not what you are ready. We do not want to use those words. Of what you chose to see of that eternity, of that everything that exists, of that divine, godlike, whichever words you use, part of you. Okay, I think this is answering my question because I guess I'm wondering like, how much can I own what has been brought into my experience when it's everything. Like, so, so if someone's in the sour mood, in a way, if I'm tuned in, tapped in, turned on, I would, I have the choice to be able to observe the sour mood, or I have the choice to perhaps focus on another aspect, and maybe they'll rise up to it. But at what you point, can, or you can completely close that mirror and cover it for a moment and shift your attention to something else. You do not own anything to anyone. You, with your focusing mechanism, are choosing what is the next question and the next question and the next question. Every time you're going outside, every time you're focusing on something with your attention, when you're not, as you call, in that place of ease or satisfaction or maybe even quiet mind to experience that inner world, you're asking questions constantly. It's just a matter if some of those questions are easy feedback for you to see quicker answers, or sometimes you're even drawn to keep asking the questions because you know that more questions you ask, more satisfaction you will get. But it's not that you ask just questions. Sometimes the question answer is such a brilliant, juicy, delicious experience. Then you ask questions, the answer. As questions, the answer. You deliberately keep digging, not into the question, but you keep digging into question, answer, question, answer, question, answer, question, answer. And then sometimes the question is so stuck at the moment, staying in front of you, like a sore thumb that you do not want to look at the sore thumb. You want to cover it for a moment. So you're always choosing how much of the dance at the moment you want to have based off of how sensitive you are, how sensitive you are about your own feeling good overall. So then really it's always just about controlling your ability of focus and choice, less about any of the conditions because I guess part of me is wondering like, you know, something like weather or, or, or a situation unfolded that seems out of my, you know, like a pandemic, right? For me, I always know my power is in my choice. I can focus elsewhere, but there's you a part- You know that the bad weather or pandemic or anything was your choice too. Everything that you experience, your choice. You cannot be separate from what you're observing in your physicality because by giving attention to some of that stuff that's happening, and getting into the groups of context of many or more joining in, you are creating it. You're creating every article that you read. You're creating every book that you're writing. Every song you've ever heard, even though you did not write that song, you have written too. You were part of that idea because if you're experiencing, that means you've created it. Every conversation you had maybe with a favorite entertainer or actor, there was mutuality in that. Every time there is a thought about something, there is mutuality. Not necessarily in a knowing way, but there is a always mutuality of everything. Costa was trying to explain that there is this favorite singer, Arman still keeps learning how to pronounce her last name. And then he realized at one point 
as they were on a beautiful trip on an island with a friend just a few months ago, that every time that he had over these 20, 30 maybe even years of experiencing the music and the character and following what, is, what this entertainer is bringing to, that all of these conversations at all time were mutual. All of these conversations so much mutual that this conversation keeps going because if there was not to be mutuality of that on some energetic vibrational that you call level, there would not be so much attention coming there because you would not continue to come back to something that is not mutual. This is what you feel when people come and perform for you and then you feel their energy. They do not know necessarily you and you and you, but they know you because they know you in the moment of receiving an idea about this song to even be in a form. They were aware of all of people who are going to be listening on it over and over and again. The writers about books as well, not necessarily consciously. They were not calling Costa or Armand or a friend one, two, three to join, but it was interaction between all of that that was at the, at the, in, on the heels of all of these experiences. So what you are bringing to this conversation is another brilliant thing, which is that everything you give attention to, you have created, not by your own hands, but by your attention. Your attention is nothing for you to control. Your attention is for you to be aware of. And there is a big difference in controlling attention and being aware of attention through your sensitivity that as you go to be so sensitive and aware of your attention, then you allow your attention, and we have not said it in these words before, you allow your attention to take its own beautiful, easy, satisfying question, answer, dance. As in the control of anything, there is holding on to, but releasing the control and allowing your attention to move you through this beautiful question, answer, dance, as you keep dancing through eternity, moment by moment by moment, you then have really, really satisfying life experiences. That was so expansive. Thank you. Ah, oh, so good. In appreciation of everything that exists, of everything that you are bringing moment by moment by moment by moment in your own question answer dance we want to offer a suggestion that there is no quest to be made there is nothing that you have to do there is nothing that you're obliged to do there is no purpose you have to fulfill but to look from a wider perspective and sometimes from very focused perspective and again from a wider and then from the very narrow perspective about the whole creative process of question, answer, dance. Because the lottery is what's already won. The lottery of you experiencing eternity in real time. And for now, that's it.